I'm Dr. Melanie Windridge, a physicist and mountaineer. I'm climbing Everest and I want to highlight the science that gets us to the summit. If I want to keep myself safe on the mountain, it's useful to look at the statistics of others on Everest so we can see where people have struggled and why, and I can use that to inform my own preparation and training. So here are some things that we know about summit attempts on Everest. The route from the south side, which is Nepal, is safer than the route from the north, in Tibet. This is because of the geography of the mountain. The summit ridge on the south side is steeper, which means that if someone's in trouble or suffering from altitude sickness, they can get down faster. Getting to a lower altitude where there's more oxygen available is vital. There is no difference between men and women when it comes to the chances of summiting or the chances of dying. There is, however, a difference with age. Over the age of 40, it just becomes progressively harder to reach the summit. And unfortunately, over the age of 60, your chances of dying are markedly increased as well. I'm 37, so I'm fairly positive about my chances. The most dangerous places on the mountain are the icefall and the summit ridge. The icefall is an unstable part of the glacier with towering blocks of ice and huge crevasses. The glacier moves very slowly, so it changes year on year, and avalanches or ice collapse can kill people as they move through. The worst disaster so far was in 2014, when 16 Sherpas were killed in an avalanche in the icefall. Avalanches are a worry because they are out of our control and they're unpredictable. Climbing the mountain in spring, before the heavy snowfall of the monsoon, reduces the risk of avalanches due to snow buildup. And walking through the icefall in the morning, when the snow is hard and frozen, can also reduce the risk, but it doesn't remove it entirely. The avalanche that occurred in 2014 happened at about 6.45 in the morning. The summit ridge is the last part of the route to the top of Everest. People here are in the death zone. If they stay too long without oxygen, they will die. Temperatures can be minus 20 to minus 30 degrees C. People on the summit ridge are exhausted and they're suffering from a lack of oxygen. Each step is a monumental effort. Expedition members can die from falls or from cold or altitude sickness. Many deaths happen on the way down when climbers are tired. I aim to reduce my risk on the summit ridge by increasing my general fitness and by training my inspiratory muscles so that I have improved stamina and more efficient oxygen usage. I also want to increase my core stability so I have better balance when I'm exhausted. If we look at the hour that people reach the summit, for people who summit and survive, then the average summit time is around 9am, whereas for those who summit and then die, the average time is around 2pm. There is a significant difference between summit times for survivors and non-survivors. Climbers must retain sufficient energy and oxygen to get down. If you're going so slowly that you're going to be summiting late in the day, perhaps you should consider turning back while you still have the energy to get down. You need to summit in the morning and you need to cultivate the ability to turn back. The death rate on Everest has been reducing over time, particularly over the time that commercial expeditions have been running. Partly this is due to good management and a knowledge of what works and what doesn't but it's also due to improvements in science and technology. Things like better weather forecasting, communications, clothing, equipment and medicine, all of these things have greatly improved safety and performance on the mountain. It is these things that I want to explore further in this project. In this series of videos, I'll be investigating the science of the summit.